I'm here today with Shannon Q. We met for the first time in person at the Faithless Forum conference this last weekend. And after the conference, several people from the speakers roster decided to come down to Austin, Texas. And the reason that we're having this conversation is because Shannon and I got in a little bit of a disagreement about altruism. And I don't think so much of a disagreement as... Um, it was a discussion where a we... A discussion, yeah. but I, I realize in this conversation... I'm taking up the, um, I'm playing the devil's advocate here. Yeah, you had an uphill battle. <laughs> I, I, I do. I, I, have, I have an uphill battle. And I think the position that you took mm -hmm. is one that I have held for the most part for most of my life. Right. Well, or at least the last decade or so. Okay. But I wanted to, I, I had heard a compelling case for altruism, or at least a case for why altruism should not be defined the way that most people define it. Right. And Which was ultimately our problem, I think, is it came down to definitions. It came down to definitions. Um, but you come from the standpoint that altruism doesn't exist. Do you kind of right. want to explain your position on that a little bit? I don't think that in the sense that any, in, I don't think anything can be completely inherently selfless. Because it ultimately comes down to motivations. And if it comes down to motivations, your motivations could be, you know, to make yourself feel good in a situation or to protect somebody that that you love in a situation. Mm -hmm. So the, I really don't think that you do anything for a completely selfless reason. So therefore, altruism does not does exist. not exist. Okay. No. <laughs> and the position that I was taking up mm -hmm. was that you could argue from that position that you know, pure psychological altruism doesn't mm. exist. Right, which is, I think, where I was. Yeah. So in terms of, you know, if, if let's say that I'm in the military and I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God, mm -hmm. but I see a grenade fall into the trenches mm -hmm. and I dive on that grenade to save my, you know, uh, brothers in arms. Right. That is an act that is most likely going to kill me. Yes. And I'm doing it because I'm trying to, maybe I'm not even thinking. Mm -hmm. I just, I care so deeply for these people. But in the back of my mind, maybe there is this emotional thing that's kind of been built up in me to, you know, be patriotic, to serve my country. I'm trying to save the lives of the people around me who I care about. And if I didn't do it, then there's, you know, the psychological cost that would be paid. Right. Which was my overreaching point. That it? would cause me to, for the rest of my life, feel guilt and shame over letting everyone else die, over being a coward. And so I would rather die than face that. Right. Exactly. Okay. So where, where I think that my disagreement came in, or more... To, just to play the devil's advocate here, yeah. the compelling case that I find for um, altruism is if altruism is a purely selfless act, mm -hmm. then you could look like you could look at an act like that and say that you're doing something that is not in your own well-being mm -hmm. or in the interest of your own well-being right. because it is something that when you do that action, you cease to be altogether. So right. it's it's for you, it's a, a complete zero sum game. And you, you know, you're, you're sacrificing your life to save other people. Right. And so if you're looking at an action like that, even if the psychological underpinnings are for your own best interest or so you think mm -hmm. it really isn't, but then what and else is there? Of, though? It's more of a psychological bug than a feature. Right. But that still means that you, when you entered into the act, your motivations weren't necessarily altruistic. Like, for example, we brought up if you were saving a child, which is essentially mm -hmm. the same scenario as the soldier scenario. Yeah. But if you were j saving the life of your child, you're preserving your your genetics to carry mm -hmm. forward. And you're also, like I mentioned, you're, you're saving yourself from future suffering. If you knew you had the choice to save somebody or save your child, and you made the choice not to, to save yourself instead, like if you do that mental calculus in your head, like in the moment, in an instant, you're choosing to save yourself future suffering by ending all of the suffering and acting as a hero in that situation. So if you're, if, if you're defining altruism as having consequences, then sure, maybe. Mm -hmm. But if you're defining altruism as entering into an act that causes suffering to you and you glean no benefit and have just the motivations mm -hmm. of, you know, of saving somebody else with absolutely nothing for you, then it's really difficult to even define because your mental state going into it dictates that, you know, likely you are doing it to avoid future suffering. Yeah. 
um, and, and this is where I, I think that we have to look at it in terms of the, the outcomes and the consequences right. of, of the outcome. Because you can look at society as a whole mm -hmm. and say, hey, if, if I want to save, you know, say my, my nephew, my niece, my sister, and my kid. Right. Okay. Purely from a genetic standpoint. I share, you know, what is it? A quarter of my genes with my nephew, quarter with my niece, half with my sister, and like half with my kids. Right. Right. As a result of that, I'm, you know, passing on more of my genes than if I let all of them die and I just survived myself. Right. And so you could say that because, you know, and this comes down to the, if you've read The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins, this idea that evolution doesn't take place at the individual level. It takes p place at the gene level. Right. So these genes, they're going to propagate. And so that selfless act that I'm doing finds its way into a population and is able to, to propagate itself to cause you know people in a society to engage in those types of altruistic acts or seemingly altruistic acts and so but it's in the best interest of the gene so altruism is carried forth through through genetics now that's strictly speaking is is for, for the benefit sacrificial of, of kin. behavior is carried forth the sacrificial behavior is carried forth to save your kin yeah and as a result of that you have kind of ingrained in you this idea that that's the noble thing to do mm -hmm or at least it's it's programmed by our genetics. Um, but it's still not necessarily in the interest of the individual, it's in the interest of the genes. So is it a purely selfless act? Well, I think it kind of depends. Is it selfless for the individual, or is it selfless for the genes? Clearly it's an act that's more selfish for the genes because the genes propagate on. Right. But in the same way as, but say, a bee sense. that's defending you know, the, the hive, it might kill itself to, to save the hive, but it shares so much genetic commonality with its, its brethren that it doing that selfless act is actually genetically to, to the advantage of the genes of the, the colony. And so it's, it kind of breaks down to like, are you looking at something in terms of it's completely selfless at the genetic level, at the individual level, at purely the psychological level? I'm looking at the psychological level because, well, could define yeah. altruism for me really quick. Just define altruism for me from your perspective right now. Well, uh, for, from my perspective, this is where I, I think that there needs to be a definitional shift because yeah. when I look up, you know, uh, the definition of altruism, it's so, so narrow. Right. It says, you know, it can't be in the best interest of, you know, your, your country, like out of patriotic duty. It can't be in the best interest of your kin or those around you or your friends. Right. It can't be something that's, you know, because you're doing it self selfishly to protect the ones you love. Right. But I'm like, well, that kind of defeats the entire purpose of, you know, what are you left with? Right. If, if there is no, yeah, there's always reasons. There's psychological underpinnings behind why we do things. But if if you're just like, eh, it just has to be something that you're doing just to your own detriment, I think that that's the definition of insanity. It's, <laughs> <Yes>. it's like, <laughs> you know what, it makes someone else feel good to just like, you know, slice my wrist open. So I'm just going to kind of do it and just kind of sit back and smile. It's like, well, th that it's that's harming yourself. It's not that the cost benefit Ratio but then we're back not. to motivations again, though, I yeah. think there. And um, it's easy to look at the extremes, like when, when you're going to die. But if you mm. engage in that act and you're attempting to protect those people and prevent yourself future suffering, right? Because mm. you don't you don't want to live with the fact that you could have made that choice and chose incorrectly. Yes. So that enters into your motivation. So that's you thinking of your future self, your potential future self in that scenario. What if you don't isn't die? That, isn't that isn't that a um, like a cognitive bias, like a, a delusion in a way? Because it's not a, no, it's not a delusion. B because because you know we, we do this we do this all the time. Like I'm, I'm sure you've read uh, Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow. Yeah, that's a real. Yeah. Good. So so this notion that we make these split second decisions mm -hmm. with kind of the the reptilian brain. And we don't necessarily stop and think rationally and process through and, and think through all the actual rational outcomes. So we wind up making all of these cognitive errors that are not in our own best interest necessarily or, or that just don't make sense, logical sense. And I think sure. that when, when we do those kinds of acts of self-sacrifice, maybe the, the underpinning emotional gut reaction is – I don't want to go on and live with the guilt and the shame, mm -hmm. but I would argue that that's a cognitive bias because you're. But then how is it altruism? You're then? you're making you're making an error of judgment, and you're sacrificing your entire self. So you get nothing left. You have zero. You know you can't feel good or bad emotions. You can't recover or heal and move on or have a family or have a life. Right. So you're getting rid of all of that. I would say that that is a selfless act because you're getting rid of yourself entirely. But you also defined it as a bug, though. So you're saying by your definition, that means that altruism is 
is, is a mental defect, essentially. It's, it's you making those split se second decisions that we're programmed to make to sacrifice yourself for the benefit of a group or to sacrifice yourself so that you don't have to live with knowing that you didn't make, make a choice that benefited the group. I'm, I'm not and, necessarily... And that it's a mistake, which means that you wouldn't have a choice in that situation anyway. So even then, what really is altruism? I'm not necessarily saying that it is a bug for the system as a whole. But if you don't have the choice, based on what you're saying, you don't yeah. have a choice in that scenario, right? Well, I don't think we have a choice, period. I don't believe in like so libertarian free will. So altruism is really just defined as engaging in a sacrificial act split second then? I don't think it has to be split second. What, what I'm saying is that I don't think it's it's a bug necessarily for the group as a whole or for the genes as a whole. But on the individual level. But on the individual level, you can do things where, you know, maybe in the back of your head, you're reacting emotionally and thinking, hey, I I don't want to live in a world where, you know, I'm, I face the guilt and the shame daily. But you don't know that that's necessarily going to be the right. case long term. Like you could recover and heal and move forward. You know, maybe you, you do something to save a loved one. Maybe they weren't going to die anyways. And you just reacted quickly and you wound up dying. Maybe they died and they, you know, would have otherwise been extremely abusive and horrible and horrific. Right. And what and, if you live and you glean a bunch of benefit? What if you oh, save them, live and glean a bunch of benefit? Are you altruistic? in that scenario? Like what if you engage in something that should be self-sacrificial, but you survive and ultimately benefit long run about the same action? Like you could you in the you engage in an action that could either equally kill you or you could survive. Then it, it does come down to it's consequential. It it does come down to consequential versus psychological. And in that case, because consequentially it's not altruistic. Right. But, but you don't psychologically, know that going in. that's future projection. It? Well, it's a future projection, though. You don't know that going in. Your likelihood when you enter into that scenario, let's say let's say you do the mental math and you, mm -hmm. say, you say it's 60-40, right? 60% yeah. I'm going to die, 40% I'm going to live. The 40% uh -huh. I'm going to live, I'm going to end up on the other end of that knowing, A, that I made the choice to save these people, B, gleaning the benefit of being like a, her a heroic behavior. You uh -huh. glean the social benefit from that. So you come out the other end. Let's say you survive. Mm -hmm. If you had died... You would have called it alt altruistic. But mm. if you don't die, that exact same action that was a 60-40 or even a 50-50 chance you didn't is no longer was... altruism by your definition. What if you didn't so, know so... it was 60-40 and you thought it was 100% chance you're going to die and you did it anyways and then you came out the other side and it turned out okay for you? Well, it's, it's still the same holds true, I think. Okay. Like, like this in the same scenario, is it altruism by your definition if there's no personal consequence? If there's no personal consequence? If you engage in a behavior and you think there's a 100% chance there's going to be personal consequence, but ultimately there's not. There's actually personal benefit. Is it altruism because you were motivated to do it, thinking mm -hmm. that there was personal consequence? I would say that if you if you or went into only it fully, because there's consequence. if you went into it fully expecting there to be consequences and you went in to face the consequences mm -hmm. and you did it anyways for the benefit of others, mm -hmm. then I would say you did it from a position of, of, of expectation of consequential right. altruism. Right. So you went into it thinking and there's going to be consequences. Lucky for you, there's not any consequences. But it was still, still done, from a, it was done from an altruistic perspective or, or, or from an altruistic position. But then we're back into motivations. I think it, that, that motivations based off of expected consequences. So it's altruism by your definition if you have a higher expectancy that there's going to be severe detrimental consequences to you. And you do it anyway. And you do it anyway. Yeah. Now, are, is it purely altruistic psychologically? No. And no. I think that, that's where... That's like, where we get caught up. Is Well, and, and that's where I think that we, we agree. And I think that's where most people in this, looking at this from the outside, would right. say there's no altruistic uh, behavior ever. Yeah. Is from that psychological um, position of purely psychologically... We're driven by our emotions. We're mm -hmm. driven by our, our wants and our needs. And so we're, we act in selfish behaviors for our own best interest. Or, or group if, best or interest. Or group best interest, which is the, the best interest of potentially our genes. Or at mm -hmm. least if we're acting for a group that's not our kin, it's you know whatever percent of the, the human population that we... Um, like for example, if, if I social groups matter a lot to people too. Well, well, and, and, and you could argue too that like, let's say that I come over and I help you move. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I realize that I'm investing in a certain amount of social capital Yeah. and I'm investing in a friendship and maybe down the road, I have a flat tire and you help me out. 
yeah. or I have something that happens to me and you come help me out. Right. Then there's there's this this amount of kind of investment and some people are going to be just takers and those people tend to fare worse long term because people because realize you that start to advantage. kind of distance yourself from those that take advantage of you. Some people are matchers. If I'm a giver and I'm always giving of myself to other people without expecting a handout in return, mm-hmm. um, there's a great book on this called Give and Take, which looks at kind of the positive um, long-term consequences of being a giver versus taker versus matcher. Givers almost always fare better in the long term. Mm-hmm. So there is that. that's kind of the plus side to this is while there is ne- not necessarily such a thing as a purely altruistic act – It actually works out in favor of society as a whole and you yourself because it's not such a limited pie that it's a zero sum game. It's like if I make you better off, then, you know, for example, if if I make a I invest in a developing country Mm -hmm. and they wind up, you know, having better schools. And and so they wind up uh, creating a cure for cancer. It might help me when I'm dying of cancer to, you know, the. Right. That investment but comes around. But then it's around. not an altruistic It's behavior. not an altruistic And there's a behavior. reason those models exist is because they're recognized. Because but all of us benefit. Right. Because all of society is moving forward together. Because we've increased the size of the pie rather than fought over the last piece. Right. And so in, in terms of sheer economics, you know, you, you look at um, Adam Smith and the, the idea of like um, comparative advantage and stuff. And as we, you know, we start specializing and trading and helping each other out and stuff like the entire economy grows. And I think that's a revolutionary idea, but it, it's like, it's not altruistic. It's for all of society, but you don't need altruism. It is for altruistic if you have to exist within a society and you are and you're cognizant of the fact that you're gleaning the benefit of being inside of a strong society or a strong social group. Okay, how is it altruistic? Is, or isn't altruistic. It isn't altruistic. Say. It isn't yes, altruistic. Yes. Okay. Um, because you're benefiting from the group. Yeah. So that's where, that's where I think it, the the positive side of it is that even if there is no such thing as pure psychological altruism, mm-hmm. we still all can benefit. Yeah. And it's not well. Everyone is selfish. I don't and think people so, should be selfish. My goodness, I just <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that people should roam around, you know, harming each other and just engaging for themselves. But I think that we should come to the recognition that mm. you know we engage in behaviors or we have motivations. Okay. When we engage so you're in saying the, drawing a distinction between selflessness and altruism. Yeah, I think you can be selfless. Like I think you can in- relatively or purely. Relatively selfless. I don't think Relatively. that I'd, if you were purely self selfless, you you'd be dead yeah. <laughs> really quickly, really so, quickly. I, I just think that like when you're looking at it from kind of an eagle eye view, yeah. Yes, I am getting like like let's say I'm like you know Shannon, you know like maybe I'm busy and I've got all this stuff I have to do, but like you're hurting and you're you know you're crying or something. I'm like Shannon, it's okay. I give you a hug and I kind never of cheer stop you crying. Up. <laughs> That's all I Let, do. Let's, let, let's say that I do that. I'm I'm investing my time. Mm-hmm. In a way that it may not benefit me at the moment, but it's like, I'm being kind to you. And, you know, I I might feel better about myself. I might come away going like, I really helped a friend out. And I I get, you know, a rush of like oxytocin or dopamine or whatever. Yeah. And chemically speaking, I am getting a reward, you know, and we all do this. And you get a relationship reward too, because you're building trust with somebody. Social capital. Exactly. Yes. And, and so from that standpoint, it's like, yes, it is not a purely altruistic, selfless act. Mm. But from the outside, that's not how we operate in society when we reward people for, you know, Nobel Peace Prizes for going out of their way to try to make the world a better place. When we look at people who are, are elevated well, we give in out society, Nobel Peace Prizes for people that try. So that, that's another, that's, that's a it's, goal. It's an, it's an incentive to make society better so that we all prosper mm-hmm. because we know that those incentives are selfish incentives for the individuals to do selfless. So where's the altruism? <laughs> but that that's why I, I think like if there's no such thing as altruism, what's the point of even having that definition? It becomes useless. It becomes kind of meaningless. Like we, we I, I don't disagree I, with you. I think you. That, that altruism should be viewed more and like it, there should be a redefinition of altruism in terms of consequentially a purely selfless act. That I would agree with you because if you put it, if you throw it into the realm of consequentialism, mm-hmm. then yeah, I would agree with you. Because otherwise, that be, it loses because all Because it's, it's just a, it's just whether or not you enter into a behavior thinking that it's going to have a more detrimental effect to you than a positive effect to you yeah. in that moment in that situation. Mm-hmm. Because, because otherwise, you're ju- you're looking at motivations, and there's always going to be a psychological motivation for doing something. Yeah. Always going to be a reason that you choose to enter into that, and you're not. That our self-preservation wiring is really, really strong. So we don't, even in a knee-jerk fashion, 
just jump in to protect people unless at our own detriment, unless there's a reason that motivates us. Yeah. Right. So we're either we either don't want to live with ourselves in the future because we made a choice that we're not proud of, or we want to protect people that we love because we don't want to live without them, mm -hmm. or we want to be remembered as doing something fantastic and great, or we are hoping that maybe we'll come out the other side of it and be recognized for our sacrifice. Mm -hmm. We don't just say, well, I'll just do this because I'll just flat out sacrifice myself for no reason whatsoever like there's always a motivation you're you're more likely to jump in front of a train for your mother your mm -hmm. father your son your daughter your friend than you are if you're in a crowd of people and there's a stranger there mm -hmm. right the, so our motivations enter into it yeah it, it does at the same time i think part of that is instinctual potentially yeah yeah and it and, varies person to person. Not everybody's even going to do it necessarily for somebody that they love. Some people yeah. have a really strong self-preservation. And I, I want to run this, this idea past you real yes, quick. What, what about bees? So like what bees, about bees? bees don't necessarily have the the, the same. Like, bees they don't, exist they don't as have, a collective. They, they, they do exist as a collective. But at the same time, while they are a colony, they're not a single cell or a multi-celled you know, organism. It's not like all the bees are a part of one identity. They are still individuals. Some might argue with that, I think. Like the, so? you can still have a bee that you know. Yeah, on the one hand, they can't. It, once it's they can't the live. Hive, they can't live outside of the can't hive. Function no. But it's a collective. But at the same time, if a bee is like it's not doing it necessarily. Like if if a bee sacrifices itself and stings a intruder mm -hmm. and it dies instantly on the spot, it doesn't have the psychological rewards and punishments necessarily that we do. Right. It doesn't think about it and have the the strong social shame of a society that's going to be like, how dare you? Have, you know, but we're otherwise. not bees, and we don't exist we're, in a collective. We're not bees, but I'm looking purely from a does altruism exist in nature? Oh, so in position like, potentially, but they're programmed to do that because they're it's part of a collective. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, it's instinctual because otherwise, the, if they allow with that threat to penetrate the hive, everybody. Everybody dies. dies, including them and future generations. So it's programmed into them. In which case, in which case, though, the selfishness then extrapolates onto the genes rather than the individual. Yeah. And I think we agree there, too. So then it's 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 just the, I'm wrapping the a cortex around so then, that. Then at the, <laughs> just at, at the in cortex <laughs> at the individual level, though, right? you could argue that the bee is being altruistic in a way. Well, yeah. Well, the bees don't have any form of cognition that's like, yeah. that, that's detectable, at least. So we can't look at a bee and assess their motivations because for all we know, they don't even have the ability to have motivations as we understand them. Yeah, they're, they're purely so reactionary. If, right. So if we're mapping us onto bees, we would need to not have prefrontal cortexes. But, uh, but our behaviors, I mean, you're a psychologist, like oftentimes like we, you know, react well, we react kind of instinctually, emotionally, okay. and then we do this post hack, uh, post hack, post hoc rationalization of it. Yes. And so, if that almost strikes me as more of an ins instinctual reaction and behavior, but you can teach a, yourself behaviorally to not like you can like, that they do it with soldiers. Yes, yes. You can teach yourself to suppress those reactions, or you can not even teach yourself. You can have life experiences that naturally, behaviorally, mm -hmm. or cognitively suppress or increase or those likelihoods. Exactly. Yeah. Which is why you need to take into account psychological motivations. Is there a chance mm -hmm. that somebody that you're going to engage in a completely all altruistic behavior, knee-jerk, genetic, you know, cerebellum reaction? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. But I think that there's more of a likelihood that your developmental, your your neural de developmental history is going to feed into that and can't be ignored when you're engaging in a conversation about altruistic behaviors. Yeah. Because motivations feed into behaviors and motivations are cortical. I got a maybe out of you. You got a maybe out of you. That's more than most people can do, Thomas. <laughs> Where's the confetti cannon? 
Tom I'm gonna has end, got a maybe out of me. I, I am going to end on a high note. <laughs> That's right. Shannon, thank you so much for joining me in studio. Thank you for coming out to here. Faithless Forum. Oh, I loved it. Do you want to plug your channel real quick while you're here on the oh, show? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I am Shannon Q. I have a channel called Shannon Q. I talk about the intersection between psychology and faith, and I gauge, engage in uh, complex conversations with people of all religious ilks and none at all about, you know, thick Interesting, like this one. interesting things like this, exactly. <laughs> this exactly. has been a lot of fun. This Thank was you fun. so much. Thanks, like, Thomas. And I, I hope to have you back on again in the future. I would love so. it. Thank you. Take care. You too. If you support my work on Patreon, thank you so much. And if you would like to support my work promoting science, free thought, and critical thinking, you can go to patreon.com slash holy Kool-Aid. And as always, dare to be curious, but don't drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs>